use it. <laughs> so, um, Tell me it, about your plant, uh, Chloe. Is it a succulent like aloe vera? Kind of, yeah, yeah. And you just can kind of break the plant a little bit. Yeah, and, and I give it to everybody. Um, you know, you can just start with a leaf, and it goes from there. <laughs> so I'll make sure that you get some. That Thank came you. from Trinidad originally, and, and you did in fact, it has to be wintered inside, so um, and now's the time to take my outdoor plants and distribute them. Beth, um, Beth, do you save any seeds? Do you have any seeds available? I do have some available. I like to let the plants in my yard go to seed just so they can go through their um, whole life cycle, you know. I'm mm-hmm. not always great about collecting the seeds, though. Yeah. It's, it's funny, I have moved more and more out of the realm of physical herbalism and into the realm of plant spirit healing, um, which in some sense is uh, the physical aspects of the plants are great. Um, and at the same time, the plant spirit healing is a really sustainable model because you don't need necessarily to have the physical plant there. You just need to have a relationship with the plant. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah, and it will show up. You know, we have a lot of St. John's wort in our area. You know, it just can show up and be there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Always pay attention to a plant that crosses your path three times. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, anyway, I just want you to mention again your website, how people can get in touch with you, and um, the kinds of that that you do work with anxiety, and now that you are kind of um, specializing in work with with men and around relationships, that's a lot. But you can go from there. Yes. So um, I do work primarily with men now. I have I do work with women still too. Mm-hmm. Um, you can go to bethsteinman.com to find out more about my uh, current coaching and healing offerings. Okay, and that's and spelled S-T-E-I-N-M-A-N-N, correct? That's correct, yes. And if you want information about plant spirit healing um, or any spiritual activism, upcoming community events that are going on, um, I am shifting my other website towards that purpose, which is at EssentialNatureHealth.com. And I offer a free 30-minute consultation for anyone who might be interested in learning more about working with me. Um, that can be done in person. I have an office in downtown Santa Rosa. I also work remotely. I have clients all over the country. Cool. So if you're interested in booking a consultation, um, you can email me at Beth at BethSteinman.com. Do you use or Skype, you can... Beth? Yes, I do. Okay. What was that question? Skype, the okay. video. Oh. Yeah, that's that's a good way to do it. All right. All right. And um, your website will give some responses of people that have worked, uh, I, I think, especially on anxiety. I think anxiety is really huge. In, in our culture, mm-hmm. and it, it's taken me a long time. I've always been working on my, on, on various levels, on my um, vision, my eyesight, and I'm, you know, I'm really finally putting it together that when I don't see, a lot of times it has to do with my anxiety. That's how it sort of plays out and has mm. for a long time. Mm, that's a very interesting connection. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's quite quite exciting to realize that, and uh, you know, at times when I'm I'm anxious, like like even today when I was leaving my conference and and coming back to the parking garage um, to come back here, I I I got a little lost for a minute, and then I said, "Oh, that's my anxiety," <laughs> and so I would look around again and say, "Okay." That's not. I, that, I need to find that the Capitol building. That's pretty big, <laughs> you know. So I made myself back over there. But but you know, you do you do have these opportunities, <laughs> and it is it is easier to to look at 
green than it is to look at, at gray buildings. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> it's easy on the eyes. Yes, yes. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, what are the roles of poison ivy and oak and sumac? Mm, that's a really good question. Um, you know, poison oak is really big here where we live, and I see it as one of the protectors of the forest. It's uh, one of the very first plants to come back after a fire, and it's kind of, you know, creating that boundary. Humans stay away, regeneration happening here. Um, and... It's, it's often the, the plants that have the strongest poison that also have the strongest medicine. Um, I work with flower essences as part of the work I do, and you might use a, a flower essence of uh, poison oak. For those of you who don't know what a flower essence is, it um, captures the vibratory resonance of the plant. So you're not actually ingesting the physical plant. It's similar to a homeopathic remedy. You would be ingesting um, a couple drops of water with brandy with the um, vibratory resonance of the plant mm -hmm. held within that. So if you take the flower essence of poison oak, it can really help you if you have trouble with boundaries. If you are a sensitive person and... You know, if you get social anxiety because you are walking around kind of soaking up everybody else's mood, um, poison oak can be a great one to work with. Fantastic. Um, that was a good question. I love that answer. Wow. So some people, you know, may come to you, like, let's just say a, a, a man comes and wants to work on how how to start you know, dating women and, and to deal with some anxiety about doing that and wanting to be a little bit more forthright at the same time protecting himself. Mm. So how would you proceed? That's a great question. So I have a series of healing treatments that build off of each other. And that series... It can vary person to person, but the outline kind of stays the same. And it really starts with getting to the root of where your issue is coming from. So if he has um, anxiety about getting out and talking to women, um, he could be having, you know, an issue of lack of self-confidence and not feeling good enough. So where is that issue coming from? And so we begin by doing a few healing treatments to address what started that feeling. You know, where is that feeling coming from and how can we shift it within the person so that that's no longer his MO. Mm -hmm. And then we get to a place where we are actually building up his confidence, connecting him back with his um, authentic masculine energy and, and power and confidence in a way that he can start taking baby steps um, to get out there in the world and talking to women. And I like to kind of span the spiritual and the practical. So at the same time as we're doing this um, foundational shifting healing work, we're also looking at um, the practical aspects of that person's life and looking at um, simple, easy things that they can do to shift the patterns that they've been in and begin creating um, success, small successes that they can build off of. Mm. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the little, little um, results from the practical um, can, can be very powerful. And back to plants. I think that plants give us that opportunity. And the idea of showing appreciation and partnership with plants um, to the point of um, giving back, right? Co-creating, um, if we have an al allyship with plants, to offer something back. Yes. 
that's really huge. And, you know, shifting our perspective to one of gratitude really changes everything. And I think the plants always invite that. In the Western world, we have kind of a take, take, take attitude. And beginning to actually connect with a plant and form a relationship with it really transforms that attitude. Yeah. And perhaps since we're coming to the close, I know that you, um, Beth, have something going on around a Fuku- Fukushima that's okay. um, coming up. Do you want to mention that? Because that's um, a- another aspect of how when we work with, on any level, we're working with the whole environment. Yes, thank you so much for reminding me about that. So... There are a lot of huge, devastating environmental issues going on right now, and that can be extremely overwhelming, and we can very easily get stuck in kind of feeling helpless and hopeless and not knowing how to contribute. Um, The best way I know how to contribute is through prayer and positive intention, and I have been following the Fukushima issue. There is some... scary stuff going on there uh, with reactor number four, and you can look that up if you'd like. But in response to that, I'm holding a a prayer ceremony to anchor light around Fukushima because I believe that prayer is enhanced in group. Mm -hmm. And so this ceremony is going to be um, in Santa Rosa on November 2nd uh, from 4 to 6 p.m., If you're interested in attending, um, you can email me again at beth at bethsteinman.com or you can go to either of my websites and use the contact form as well. Thank you so much for doing it. Where is it going to be? It's going to be Saturday, November 2nd, so a week from tomorrow from 4 to 6 p.m. In Santa Rosa. And and once someone contacts you, you'll, you'll... communicate where it will be yes that's correct okay okay well i want to thank you very much this is this has been wonderful it's it's so rich it's <laughs> it, it just kind of opens up you've opened up the richness that's there that we all know is there and um i just want to uh, honor the when i honor the plants i will be thanking you as well i'm thanking you now for sharing with us today and keep doing your good work Well, thank you so much for having me, all of you. It's been an incredibly rich discussion for me, too. I feel really inspired now, and thanks again. I look forward to meeting you in person. Likewise, Chloe. Thank you. Thanks, Norm. Thank you. Francis. Bye-bye. Bye, Norm.